Earlier today, I was using Blender and I stumbled across a feature that I didn't know existed. Blender has thousands of these little tucked away features that are hidden behind unusual menus or need certain shortcuts. And if you don't know they exist, then you won't be able to use them. So I like to make videos sometimes just highlighting some of my favorite hidden Blender features. And that's what I thought I would do today. So first of all, the feature that I stumbled across today, um, I noticed that the drop downs in the menus have these little tactile grips next to them. And of course, that's because you can actually grab these and you can reorder them. I didn't know you could do that. And that's really useful because there's certain settings that I use a lot more than others. And it would nice, it'd be nice to be able to move them over to the top. Now, when you restart Blender, these will all go back to their default positions. But you can change that. If you start just a new scene, like with nothing like this in it, make the changes you want to make. And then you go file, defaults, save startup file then every time you open up Blender, it will be exactly the same. Secondly, if you want to duplicate an object that you already have in the scene, instead of selecting it and then using the duplicate shortcut, what you can actually do is just grab the object straight from the outliner and drop it into the scene. It will automatically snap to the surface as well, so you can line things up nicely. And this is just a really great way for you to duplicate objects. By default on the timeline, it shows you the number of frames that are in the animation. So for instance, we have 50, then 100, 150, or we can zoom in and see the exact frame numbers. If you would like to see the time instead, like a traditional timeline, you can just go to view and use time code or press control and T and that will swap between them. Another feature that I recently found out about is that if you are dragging along the timeline and you hold down control, it will actually snap to the next full second. So you can see it's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 seconds. And that's based on the frame rate set up here. So it's basically just snapping every 24 frames. But if we change this to 30 frames, then it will now snap every 30 frames. The scene file that I'm using to make this demo was created for module two of my exterior masterclass course, which was just released yesterday. It adds four and a half hours of additional bonus content to the course and shows you the entire process that I followed to make this Spanish style Hacienda courtyard in Blender. Right now you can save 40% on this course and all of my other products over at Gumroad using the code flash. If you get the masterclass bundle, you'll get this course and another course essentially for the price of one. If you use that code, I'll leave a link in the description. So since we're talking about the timeline here, if we have an object and we give it an animation, let's say we just rotate this, right? So by default, it'll start here, rotate to the second keyframe, and then it'll stop. Something that's really handy. If you select the keyframes and then you press shift and E, you get the set F curve extrapolation. There's two of these that I use all the time. One of them is make cyclic. And what that'll basically do is it, it's just kind of the equivalent of if you just copy and paste the uh, keyframes like this, right? It'll just run it on a cycle and it'll repeat that animation forever and constantly reset itself. I'm going to clear the cyclic now. And the other one that I use, especially for this, when I'm setting the rotation of something, linear extrapolation and it will just basically however much this is rotated within these two frames it will continue that forever for the same amount of time so this is just going to keep rotating and rotating and the really handy thing about this if you don't know how fast you want something to rotate you can just set it to rotate once and then keep changing how close the keyframes are together to alter the speed Artists and photographers quite often set up their scenes using basic composition rules. One of the most popular ones, for instance, is the rule of thirds, which basically says if you split up your canvas into thirds going both directions, something like this, then the focal points should be lined up approximately with these different points. Now you can do that kind of by eye, but there is actually a way to do that inside Blender. If you're in the camera view, you just select the camera, Go to the uh, properties, open up viewport display, composition guides, and we can actually get some dots here that will show us exactly where those intersection points will be. There's loads of different composition guides here. Uh, the ones that I use most commonly are the rule of thirds and center point. There's also golden ratio and things like that as well. 
If you're inside Cycles Preview Mode like this, inside the viewport, you can actually see all your different render passes in the viewport itself. If you go to the viewport shading drop down over here in the corner, you can see it says render pass combined. And we can change this, for instance, if we want to see just the background, what the background pass will look like, we can get this. We can get just diffuse color, which will basically just be the flat color that all the different surfaces have. We can preview what the mist pass is going to look like. We can see the uh, normals. You can get all of this data and you can see exactly what it's going to look like inside the viewport itself. If you have an object that has UVs like this and it has a surface, a tiling surface on it, and then we extrude one of those faces, what normally happens is you get this, you get this horrible stretching where basically it just takes the UV map from the very last row of pixels and it stretches it all across. But when you're in edit mode, if you go over to this options drop down and correct face attributes, now if we extrude out, it will automatically extend the UV map onto these new faces, which means we don't get any more of that horrible stretching. Blender is capable of rendering out exactly what you can see in the viewport. If you go to view and then viewport render image, it will just give you an image like this, which you can save. You can also save out an animation, right? Which will just show you exactly like this. And by default, it'll just go wherever you've got your uh, file output set to. You just do that by going viewport render animation. This is really helpful. It's called a play blast. It's really helpful when you have an animation which has a lot of stuff going on and it just doesn't play back in the viewport in real time anymore. It can be hard to judge the timing on things. So you render out a play blast and then you can see exactly what it's going to look like. Inside the rendering panel, there's a really handy feature called render slots. It allows you to render something out without removing the last render that you did. So for instance, I have the scene set up here with daylight lighting. And let's say I want to do compare it with a late evening sort of scene and see what that would look like. What I can do is change this to a render slot two and go back to my scene and let's put the lighting right down. I'm going to turn the sun lamp off. I'm going to select these lights here and put them on 300. Select like these lights and go say 2000 and then render this out. And instead of overriding the last render that I did, it's going to actually keep them both stored. So once this render is done, we'll be able to change this over to slot one. And we can instantly compare the difference or you can just press the J key and that will cycle through all of the slots that have an active render in them. When you are selecting a color in Blender, if you have the eyedropper selected and you hold down the Alt key, you can select a, a range of values and it will average them out. So for instance, if I start moving the cursor around here, you can see it's given me an average of the colors on this wall. And if I want to add some of the blue, I can move this over to here and you can see over time it's starting to make the color more and more blue. As a bonus tip, if you're using the eyedropper, it will actually work on any surface in Blender. So for instance, if you like this color green on the node, you can actually just sample that color green. We can do it on this red over here or any color, even inside the interface. When you're working inside the node editor, if you have lots of points that are connected to the same thing, it can start to get very messy. One easy way to clean that up is to go to the layout and look for this reroute. It adds a little point that you can connect things to, and then you can connect, connect all of your nodes to this, and then you can just move this around wherever you want, and it keeps things nice and clean. Often when I'm working on new assets in Blender, I'll simply hide everything else in the scene like this and work on the object. But that can become a problem if you have uh, multiple different objects that you're working on and then for whatever reason you need to hide one of them because when you try to bring it back it's going to bring back the entire scene and that can get very annoying. What you can do instead if you want to ter temporarily work on one object is select it and press the forward slash key that'll put it in isolate mode which basically hides everything else but instead of pressing unhide you just press the isolate key again the forward slash and that will bring everything back as it was. So you can see all the other objects are still hidden and I can focus just on this object as much as I want without having to worry about everything else popping back into the scene.
And finally, when you're working on an object in Blender, it can be handy sometimes to see it from multiple different viewpoints at once. Instead of setting up lots of different views or constantly looking around the object, if you just press Control, Alt and Q, it will put Blender into quad mode, which basically gives you an orthographic view from various different vantage points of your object. So those were 15 of my favorite little hidden features in Blender. If you have some favorite features of your own that I haven't mentioned, leave them in the comments, please. If you check out the description, you'll see a link to this exterior masterclass, which just got this second module. Right now it's 40% off if you use the code FLASH. And it's also part of the Blender Masterclass Bundle, which essentially allows you to get two courses for the price of one if you use the code FLASH at the moment.